Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. So he like, please, man, please. Can y'all please get Dante, please? Please get Dante. So Al, Tarty, and this other dude named J-Rod, not J-Rock, I'm talking about J-Rod. They come and they like, hey, Dante, we need you in this cell. I'm like, what's going on? They're like, man, we, we just need you right now. So I get up and I follow them. So I go into the cell and it's about 15 of my homeboys in there and they all crowded around in the back. So I'm like, what's going on, man? So as they parted, parted as I'm walking through, I see this, this black dude on the ground lumped up and he looked like they just put him through it. So I'm like, what's going on? So Al like, listen, this is the thing. Dude just came, he just blew trial. We found out what he was really in here for. And this is the situation. This dude went to go do a drug deal. He had his three-year-old daughter with him. I guess things went south. He used his daughter as a bulletproof vest. And now you already know what time it is. So, dude, like, come on, Dante, please, man. Please, let, let me let me explain what happened. Let me explain. Now, for you people out there that be like, oh, here go Dante, go again, trying to make yourself bigger and badder than what he really is. Man, Dante really wasn't moving like that. Let me tell y'all something right quick. Do y'all remember the guy, Real Kids TV? You know, the guy that came out and so-called tried to expose me. Well, if you really think about it, that actually was a good thing because up until then, nobody has ever came out to expose me. In fact, people were saying that, oh, Dante stories is fake until uh, another prison guy that came out and basically tried to expose me. But in the same, at the same time, him exposing me actually was verifying some of my stories, some of my stories. So this story right here, he'll be able to verify this one too, because he knows about this one, because some of his people was locked up with me at this time. So anyway, so they like, they're like, no, we ain't trying to hear that. We ain't trying to hear that. The only reason why we even got Dante, because we, I had a set of rules that you are, innocent until proven guilty right and even though the judge so this is what you call a kangaroo court even though the judge or the jury convicts you whether you innocent or guilty well the inmates appoint the wise the wisest guy the one that's filled with wisdom the bible guy which was me right the enforcer guy that will enforce certain prison rules on inmates that violate the structure and the order of what we got going on, right? And I was that guy. So <clears throat> this is why they came and got me because he basically said, I, I want Dante to hear this. So this is what you call kangaroo court. Now I'm about to listen to his case. And basically I got the power of life or death in my hands for this guy. So I sit down on the desk and I'm like, so what happened? So Al stand him up, right? And then Tar T punch him dead in the stomach. I say, yo, yo, y'all chill, y'all chill. I got this. So he like, man, listen, I said, I said, so what what tell me what happened from the beginning. Now listen, y'all, I'm gonna make this story short, okay? It's gonna be only about two minutes, so I ain't gonna be long winded. Here you go. So <clears throat> remember y'all I said two minutes so anyway he like okay so somebody called me and I went to go get some I went to go get some drugs and I I, I called my baby mama and I told her that she need to watch our, our daughter so 
you know, my baby mama was going out to the club and she just turned the phone off and I ain't had nobody to watch our daughter. So I basically took her with me. I said, okay, keep going. And he was like, okay, so I end up meeting this dude behind the school and, you know, something that didn't seem right. But I, I just continued. I just got out the car with the money. I said, all right. So he said, when I got out the car with the money, I noticed it was three other guys. That when it, it only supposed to have been him. But I noticed it was three other guys when I was coming up. So I went back because I thought that maybe if they see me with my daughter, that they won't do nothing to me. Right? When he said that, Al lost it. Al just snuffed him. Ugh. And, I, and you know, I had my... I, Looked at my other homeboys to like y'all go grab Al, man, get Al out of here. So Al really trying to get that dude, and some of my other homies they grabbing Al and get him out the cell. I said, keep going. He like, oh, oh, okay, okay. So basically, I was, I, I got my daughter, and you know I had it in my arms, and you know I had a grocery bag for the money, you know, to get him. So next thing you know, when I get up on them, they like, "What's up, man? Who 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 is this?" And he like, "Oh, this, this, this is my daughter, man. This, this is my daughter." So they like, "Why would you bring your daughter anyway, man? You you got the money?" He like, "Yeah, it's right here." And he like, "Do y'all got the drugs?" And they was like, "Yeah, we this was over here." And he was like, "Well, can y'all give me to it? Give it to me?" And when he said that, one of the guys upped it. And when he upped it, he, he upped the gun. And he was like, nah, run it. Run all that right now. So he said when when the guy, now, he had his daughter in his left arm. He said he had his daughter in his left arm. So basically, he had his pistol right here on the on his left hip. So his right, his right hand had the money. And you know he had the, his right hand had the bag with the money, and when when dude took it from him that had the pistol on him, he went into his waistband on the left side and pulled out the thing, and he got the bussing, right? But then the guy got the bussing back at him. Now he now he said he's running, but he got his daughter in his hand and as he's trying to bust back as he running they busting back at him and the daughter getting hit now i'm like so what what am i here for why why am i here and he like because they bro they trying to kill me in here bro they, they trying to kill me and i'm trying to tell them it's not my fault i said yo what type of drugs you was taking like what what like what what type of drugs was you taking? He like, man, that day I, I, I took some ice, uh oh uh, I had like two perks, I, I I had some weed that day. I said, So you so you a drug so you a crackhead? He like, man, bro, I, I just I I've been, been so stressed, my baby mom been putting me through so much, man. She been putting me through so much. So I I said, Listen, listen. Why did you bring your daughter? Why did you bring your daughter? He like, man, I don't know, bro. I, I, I just had nobody to watch her. I said, listen. I said, everybody clear out the cell. They're like, you, I said, everybody get out. Get out the cell. I'm, I'm from the highlight him by myself. So everybody walk out, right? So Al like, man, hey, what's going on in there? They like, man, Dante said he want to talk to him by himself. So Al like, man, Dante on some sauce. Dante on some sauce, man. So you got some of the homies trying to quiet Al down. He like, no, man. No, he always trying to be forgiven, man. F all that, man. F that. I want to get at him. So I leave. I say, hold up. And I pop out the cell. I'm like, what you say, Al? He like, man, why, why you trying to show that dude mercy, man? You, you heard what he said? I said, Al, chill out. Now, Al was my number two, right? I, I knew Al. Let me give y'all a quick history about Al for the people that don't know. Number one, 
Al was the only one in tar T that could pull that off of me. You know what I mean? Uh, them, them two was the only two. Even Homicide couldn't get that off on me, right? But Al was my dog from Flint, Michigan. I knew Al when I was, let me see. Man, I'm getting old, y'all. I want to say when I was, dang, y'all, I'm getting old. Hold up. Okay, I met Al when I was in the sixth grade. No. I think the sixth grade, y'all. I'm, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm, I'm getting old, man. So I met Al in the matter of fact, I the y'all I'm gonna give y'all a side story. I'm sorry, y'all. This is how I met Al. So I was going to Northwestern Edison, right? This is when was it? Hold up, hold up, hold up, y'all, hold up. It, in the meantime, while I'm trying to get it together, y'all hit the like button for me right quick. But um Dang. In the sixth grade, I got there. Boom, boom, boom. Boom. Okay, the seventh grade, I met. No. Yes. Hmm. My bad, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not stalling the story. I'm just really thinking. I'm we, we, okay, we're just going to say I met Al in the sixth grade. So I knew Al since I was 12 years old, I believe. Yeah, I think I was about 12. So, I knew Al from... Okay, so the story went like this. When I went to Northwestern in the sixth grade, this is when they first made it Edison in Flint, Michigan, right? Um, They end up... I end up meeting this dude named Mark Woodward. Mark Woodward stayed literally around the corner from me and me and him was like real cool. We was, we was friends. Now, even though Mark stayed, we me and Mark stayed in the hood. I stayed on. He he stayed on Van Wagner, and I stayed on Edmond Street, and we literally stayed right behind each other, kind of. And even though we stayed in the hood, Mark ended up getting the PlayStation 2. Like when the PlayStation 2 first came out and Grand Theft Auto 3 came out. Y'all remember that back in the day when Grand Theft Auto 3 came out? So I used to go to Mark house every day and play uh, Grand Theft Auto 3. And um, that's how me and Mark met. So Al, like, okay, so in school, it was, it was me... This dude named Jarrell. This dude named... Um, dang. Me, Jarrell. This dude named Anthony. This dude named... Um, Terry. And Mark. We used to all blaze. And what blaze is... I don't know what y'all call it in y'all city. Blaze is basically when you're talking about somebody. You know, in the South, they call it capping or joning. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, in the comment section, let me know what y'all call it in y'all city when people, you know, ragging on each other, talking about each other. So we was really good at that. Like we was really good. So when we whenever we're here that there's somebody, you know, in the school that was really good at blazing, we'd go find them and we'd we'd try to get at them. You know what I'm saying? Um if if you don't know about Northwestern Edison, Northwestern is was one of the biggest high schools in Flint, Michigan. But when Edison took over it, they put like middle school in there, like sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and they divided the school. So you got sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, which is um, the side I was on, and then you got eighth. I mean, you got ninth, tenth, eleventh, and twelfth grade for the high school side. So they had to divide it. So I, we found out that they were talking about there's a guy in there that can blaze really good. And they said his name was Al. So me, Jarrell, uh, 
Terry and I think Anthony was with us and we went to go find them. And when we found them, yo, Al was a beast. But here's the thing about Al. Al had a missing tooth in the front in the ninth grade. That's right. Al had a missing tooth in the front, right, right in the right in the front of his grill. And you know, dudes were trying to blaze on him about that, but Al was so used to getting blazed on, he weaponized that. You know, it, it goes, it could go two ways. For somebody to get blazed on like that, uh, either they be like get taken advantage of and get like punked out or whatever and let people just dog them out by talking about them because they too for whatever. But no, Al weaponized that. Al was a beast in blazing. You, that, cause that's the only thing you can say about him is his front tooth missing. But he would destroy you. And when we got up on Al and I realized who he was, man, I was on him. We was on him and he ripped us to shreds. Now, me and Al was, it basically came down to just me and Al. And if anybody in Flint, Michigan, know me or Al, they know exactly what I'm talking about. So me and Al just going, that's going back and forth. You know, we got a crowd watching and we just going back and forth. Neither one of us losing. But then eventually I run out of jokes, right? And, you know, the security come because they think it's a fight about to happen or a fight going on. But ain't, but it's just us blazing. So we end up dispersing whatever. So I'm going to give Al that win. Actually on the real a lot of people and later in their life they'll say, yo, it's always Dante and Al, right? <clears throat> but um uh, I think Al was way funnier than me. I was funny, but I, I gotta give it to Al. He was way funnier than me. But anyway, um so that's how me and Al met. I will go through the whole history, but I'm gonna say that for another time because I know y'all came for this prison video. Anyway, so that's why I said, you know, Al was my homeboy, like my homie homie from the streets right from years ago and um so like i said he the only one that could get that off of talking to me crazy like that and yeah if y'all wonder yeah me and al we we fought a couple times out in the streets but that's what homeboys do but anyway um so i get out there and i'm like yo al chill man i, I got this so you know i come back in the cell and do like Man, Dante, please, man, bro, I didn't know. I said, listen, man, I'm, I'm going to tell you like this. I don't know why you called me, why why you asked for me to come in here to hear your case, because you you took your, your baby girl in a bad situation when she lost her life. You used your baby girl as a bargaining token to... You brought her to the slaughterhouse. I mean, what, what do you want me to say? He like, bro, I, I, I was just high, man. I, I was high. I, I didn't know. I said, dog, we all indulge in certain things. But I know enough. I know enough not to bring my kids into a bad situation. I said, listen, man. Because I don't want your blood on my hands. I'm not going to tell them to do anything. I said, I'm going to let you know this. I don't. What you telling me right now. You, 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 you was a. I can't say the word on YouTube. because They might flag the video. They've been tripping on my videos lately. But I call. I say you are a baby. K-I-L-L-E-R. And I said, I can't rock with that. So I said, I'll tell you what, but at the same time, I'm a man of I'm a man of the Bible. Now, if you violated your daughter, you know, y'all, I can't say certain words, but if you did the unthinkable to your daughter, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. You you would probably be going to the app you probably already be in the afterlife by now. But um, I tell you what. Since you didn't give your daughter a fighting chance, Dante going to give you a fighting chance. I said, the moment I leave out this cell, 
you literally got two seconds to get out the cell. If you can get through all of them and get to the guards, then I guess you, you I'm going to let them know that, you know, to spare your life. But if you can't get through them, like your daughter couldn't get through them bullets, it is what it is. So he's like, wait, 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 what you mean? I said, let, when I leave out this cell, I'm going to let them know that if you can get through them and you can get to the guards, then you got your life. If not, then it's like, I'm out. He's like, oh, please, please, man, don't, don't do that, man. I can't. I can't do that. I say, and your daughter couldn't do it neither. So then I walked out. I say, y'all, check this out. I'm going to leave it up to y'all. If he can't, and Al like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, Al tried to get in the cell. I said, no, no, hold on, y'all, hold up. If he can get out of this cell, when y'all go in this cell, then let him be. And y'all take it how y'all want. I just walked off. I'm going to end it right there. Because there's, there's no statute a limitation for taking somebody's life. Some of my homies are still locked up. Now, I'm not going to say. I'm going to put this in the air. Make it real mysterious for y'all. But uh, I'm not going to say if he made it out that safe. If he made it out of that cell to get to the guards to keep his life. And I'm not going to tell y'all if he didn't. Now, y'all can do your research. In fact, y'all can go over there and go um, bombard Real Kids TV channel and ask him because he could he he'd be able to tell y'all that answer. And like I said, the the whole moral of me telling y'all this story is because I realize that there are a lot, a lot of misguided young people out here, young adults, kids raising kids. And, you know, what, what makes you think? What, what, what possessed this guy to take his daughter to a drug deal? What, possess this guy to take his daughter to a drug deal and then take her look I, I'm not even going to say I could I could see if he left her in the car but this man took his daughter under the assumption that these guys would show him mercy because they see him with his daughter Come on, y'all. Listen, y'all. I am going to go live this Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. This Sunday, 10 a.m., I'm going live. I believe, matter of fact, what's today's date? Well, it don't even matter. This video is going to drop. Today is Thursday, August 1st. So if today is Thursday, August 1st, Friday is August 2nd, Saturday is August 3rd, Sunday is August 4th. August 4th, I'm going live at 10 a.m. So y'all best to be in the building. All right. Y'all make sure y'all turn on y'all notifications. Um, matter of fact, I'm going to have the link to the live pent in the comment section. So y'all just click on it and y'all just get ready for the show. I'm out. Hey, if y'all can appreciate some beautiful artwork, especially resin artwork, look no further. My girl Shay, she is out cold with this resin work. She can make stuff for your man cave. She can make stuff for your woman cave. Whatever the occasion is, she got you. Matter of fact, this is her Instagram page right here. Y'all go check her out. I'm going to leave her link 
in the comment section. Go check her out. If you want me to promote your business, your products, or your social media channels, make sure you contact me at the number that y'all see on the screen. Also, this is the new official cash app for the Dante Show Network. If you want to be a part of the growth of the Dante Show Network, make sure you lean on the cash app. I don't care if you donate a dollar or $10,000. It is all appreciated. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again.